My home office is quite small, and space is a valuable resource, so in planning some upgrades to my PC, I realised that the once necessary mid-tower case was now many empty space. This caused me to go and search for new case alternatives, first looking at the most popular small form factor cases. Small form factor builds have rapidly become more and more popular, meaning that there are so many choices when it comes to small form factor cases. However, the vast majority of them require at maximum an MATX size motherboard, with most requiring an MITX, meaning that if I were want to use one of these cases, I would have to replace my current ATX motherboard, something that at this time I don't really want to do. When researching cases, I did come across the popular Meshroom S that supports full size ATX motherboards. However, it can only support this size of motherboard whilst using an SFX size power supply, and I would prefer to use the perfectly functional ATX power supply I already own. Following this, I widened my search to some medium form factor cases, and with a bit more research later, I still hadn't found a case that fit what I was looking for. So I decided to design my own, a medium form factor PC case that can support full size ATX components, modern GPUs, all whilst minimising volume and hopefully being aesthetically pleasing. I settled on using 2020 T-slot aluminium extrusions to construct the mainframe of the case, as they are readily available and would provide all the mounting options that I required. I cut these to size with a hacksaw then tapped them with an M6 spiral flute tap. These can be purchased already cut to size by the manufacturer, however I wanted to use what I had on hand. M5 and M6 hardware were used to bolt together the extrusions, along with the majority of the remaining case pieces. I constructed two U-shaped profiles from the aluminium extrusions before slipping in a 3D printed cross brace and securing it into place with T-nuts and M5 bolts. I designed the case itself in Fusion 360. This enabled me to check the fit between all of the PC parts in addition to designing all of the parts that will be later 3D printed on my Creality K1C. I could then connect the two frames together using more 3D printed parts, T-nuts and M5 hardware. The next pieces to be added were three 3D printed cross braces. I press fit magnets into each of these so that I could add fan filters later in the build. With the magnets press fit into place, I could slide the three cross braces into the 3D printed parts already installed on the aluminium extrusions. The final step for the core frame construction was to bolt the front and back pieces together. With the core frame complete, I could move on to securing the exterior panels to the case, first starting with the lower section of the back panel. I slid this into place using T-nuts and more M5 hardware. To aid with customizability and future upgrades, I installed M3 heatset inserts into some of the 3D printed parts using a soldering iron. With the heatset inserts added, I can install these pieces into the case. Due to the small footprint of the case, cooling could be an issue, so I included two case fans in my design with the hope they would provide sufficient airflow to keep all the core components cool. With the front intake fan installed, I moved on to installing some 3D printed magnet mounts. These would later allow the front panel to be installed, while still enabling the fan filters to easily be removed for cleaning. I designed the case to use a PCIe riser so that the GPU could be mounted vertically, allowing me to reduce the overall width of the case. The mounting bracket for the riser is one part that I may improve upon in any future iterations of the case to add slightly more clearance between the bracket and the power supply, as currently the GPU is a little bit fiddly to install. With the PCIe riser cable installed, I moved on to installing the motherboard. I slid this into place and then screwed it into the motherboard mount that I had installed previously.
With the motherboard screwed into place, I moved on to installing the power supply. First threading through the 24-pin ATX and 8-pin CPU connectors, and then screwing the power supply into place. Next to be installed was the CPU cooler. For this build, I settled on a 240mm AIO from Deepcool. With the CPU block tightened down and the pump header plugged in, I moved on to installing the GPU. The GPU I used in this build was the Palette Gaming RTX 3080, which is a just over triple slot card and represents about the largest card that could be installed into this case design. With the GPU installed, I moved on to screwing in the radiator with some 3D printed mounts. With the radiator screwed into place, I can move on to installing the exterior panels and mounts. I kept the front I.O. very minimal for this case design as it's not something that I regularly use. I have a USB hub mounted to the side of my desk with an arm's reach that I use to connect any external accessories. So I designed the top panel to house a power button with LED and a single USB-C 3.2 10 gigabit per second port. I cut, stripped and tinned four lengths of solid core wire before soldering them to the button. Two of these wires would be used for the power button and two of them for the LED indicator. Once soldered, I applied some heat shrink to the solder connections and then moved on to terminating the other end of the wires. To enable this button to easily be connected to any motherboard, I decided to terminate these ends of the wires with 2.54mm DuPont style connectors. These are the type of connectors found on most front panel I.O. So this means that my case will be compatible with all other motherboard connections. I required two 2-pin two female connectors for this button, one for the button itself and one for the power LED. Once I removed the inner connections from the metal sprues, I could crimp them onto the stripped wires, then insert them into the housings. I marked the pair for the LED with a silver dot of Sharpie. With the button terminated, I moved on to constructing the I.O. assembly. This started with two 3D printed parts, one of which I installed a heat set threaded insert into. I screwed the two together with an M3 cap head bolt. Next I mounted the USB-C connector. This particular one is a front panel connector from Fractal Design, intended as an upgrade for their Meshify 2 cases. With this screwed into place, I could install the power button, first setting the connector through the hole before then securing it in place with the locking nut. I then added two M5 machine screws and T-nuts so this assembly could be bolted onto the rest of the case. To connect the upper T-slot aluminium sections, I had to file down the button head screws I had, as they wouldn't quite fit without this. This was due to poor tolerances on the cheap three-way corners I purchased to attach these extrusions together. Next I could install the upper section of the back panel, which included an 80mm exhaust fan. This panel, like the majority, was attached to the case using M5 machine screws and T-nuts. I moved on to constructing the side panels, which started with some 3D printed frame pieces. I super glued these together using bolts to help with alignment. Once the glue was set, I applied some double sided tape to the inner edge of the frame and used it to secure some mesh to the 3D printed frame. This mesh would help with the airflow of this compact case, whilst filtering out larger dust particles. If dust does end up being an issue with this case, I do have some much finer stainless steel mesh that I can add as a filter. With the lower mesh panel completed, I installed it onto the case. The upper portion of the side panel was made from clear acrylic that I drilled two mounting holes into. I decided to make both of the side panels identical, with the lower mesh half and the acrylic upper half. This meant for the left side of the case, I would be showing off the GPU and all the internal computer components, and for the right hand side of the case, an opportunity to show off the PCB and some LEDs on the back of the motherboard. With the two side panels complete, I moved on to the front and top panels. I 3D printed the front and top panels in a marble white PLA material. I installed magnets into these pieces so I could easily customise my case in the future and make it easy to install and clean fan filter mesh. 
To enable all of the 3D printed parts to be printed on most standard print beds, I decided to split the front panel into two sections, both of which magnetically clipped onto the case. Installation of the top panel was very similar to that of the front, however this time I had to cut out a little section in the fan filter for the front I.O. I also decided to glue together the 3D printed section to make removal and installation a little bit easier. With the top and front panels installed, I could now peel off the paper protective coating that I had left on the acrylic. The final step was to add some mesh fan filters to the bottom of the case, as I had mounted the power supply to intake air from this position. I did this by sticking on some magnetic strips onto the fan filter material, and then using this and some pre-installed magnets to clip them onto the base. With the filters installed, the case was complete. Straight.